In the blessing you are making new wine In the soil I now surrender You are breaking new ground So I yield to you and to your careful hand when I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring me. In 
the crushing, in the pressing, you are making me wine. In the soul I now surrender, you are breaking. What's up, guys? Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, it was great seeing everyone yesterday. I know, um, like I was talking to someone earlier, it was a little harder getting up before 8 a.m. finally to go somewhere, but definitely was so thankful to be here um, with y'all in worship yesterday and, um, and thankful to be here tonight. Um, when Joseph, or I guess Jack asked me to speak, I had no idea what I was going to talk about. And um, so I just wanted to talk about something that I know I've struggled with and something that's really been on my heart lately. Um, and the Lord's challenged me in this, and I hope. He challenges you tonight also. So um, with that being said, let's pray real fast, and then we'll get started. God, we uh, thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for your word. Uh, Jesus, thank you for equipping those who are least undeserving, God. And thank you for lifting up all people, God, who are your children, Lord, to use them and, and work in them, God. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your son. And I pray that you'd speak tonight, however you want to speak, in and through me, God, and through all of us. Lord, we love you, Jesus, and we praise you. Amen. Um, so um, the other day I was talking to a friend and um, it was his birthday, it was his 22nd birthday and we were talking and um, he was talking, he said 18, 19, something like 18, 19, 20, number 21 birthdays were, were really good and really normal. Uh, I guess like every other birthday growing up, we expect the traditional birthday gifts and the traditional birthday type setting. And uh, he mentioned that number 22 felt a little different. And by no means am I saying 22 is old. That is not where I want to go with this. But he said that 22 feels different because now he feels like he is over the hump and getting ready to find a job. He'll be a senior this year, and I guess I'll be a senior next year also. And, and when I got off the phone with him, um, it, uh, it made me almost throw up I, in a joking way. But I thought to myself, you know, he is 22 also, and I'm about to turn 22. And like I mentioned, I'll be a senior next year. I know many of you all on Zoom tonight will be a senior next year. And, and really, even if you're freshman, the next three or four years, I feel of this time period are very critical um, to who we are called to be in, in uh, the place that we live and the church that we're committed to. But it's also um, a, a critical time as to who we're called to be um, as followers of Christ. And um, I know for me, um, at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, um, I have no idea what's next. I think that's most of us. We, we really don't know what even tomorrow holds, but we do know 
uh, that the Lord does have a plan for us, but I know in my life, I'm a big warrior. If you do know me, I do like to have a plan and a schedule, and when I don't have that, definitely get thrown off a little bit. But not having uh, the insight to, to, to next year after graduation has definitely frightened me a little bit. Um, and I think the world has done an excellent job of telling us things that we need to know, things that I noted were, um, I need to have this certain job after I graduate. I need to, to have my future spouse picked out within two or three years from now. I need to start thinking about certain places to live. I need to start thinking about how am I going to provide, hopefully, um, for my children one day. You know, these are thoughts that I've all, I think probably all of us have had in our lives, and I know these are thoughts that have ran through my mind lately. Um, and I think at the end of this, I become anxious. I think we all become anxious. We become exhausted. Um, but more importantly and, and most significantly, I think we become ultimately separated from, from Christ and His plan for our life because we act on our anxiety. And then when we know when we act on our anxiety, we, we run from Christ um, because we're not sure of what's next. So um, I went through a few places in, the, in Scripture that I thought um, were, were um, pertinent to this, this topic. And um, I hope they challenge you tonight. Really don't have a theme message. Do want to dive into the story of Moses tonight and really check out um, just really his birth and his childhood how he came to lead the Israelites and how God specifically used him uh, to do something unimaginable um, through them. So um, last thing, we're all called to something. Um, I believe that we all have specific places, specific people that we need to be around. Um, but there's only one true calling that we are certain of. Um, we look for the Lord's will. We search for the Lord's will. But we do know that the Lord's will is for us to share uh, share and show Jesus with everybody that comes in our path. So um, with that being said, if you have your Bible tonight, open up to Exodus 1. Um, we'll start in verse 22, and then we'll, they'll, we'll read on a little bit into Exodus 2 so fast. So take a moment, flip there, and, and we'll get started. It says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. And then it goes into chapter 2. Now a man of this tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him from th for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the, the basket among the, weeds, the reeds, and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And then the last verse, When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So um, I believe there's a lot of different applications we can use for these scriptures tonight. And um, the ones that I really came up with, the, the promises and the challenges I, I feel like the Lord was telling me were, were really basic, but I think they're great reminders of, uh, of who the Lord is in our life, but also of who He's commanding and calling us um, to be here tonight also. So I want to share that with you, but the first promise that I get um, and receive really through reading this um, is the specificity of God. God is a specific God, and uh, we have been specifically chosen to become a child of Jesus. I think many times, I know in my life and probably years, we look around and we don't look like everyone else. We don't talk like everyone else. We may dress differently. Or we may hang out with different types of people. We may enjoy doing different types of things. Or we may enjoy going to different types of places. And we get discouraged um, because we're not like everybody else, and that's okay. I think Moses is a prime example of certainly setting yourself apart. And I think that's what we're called to do here um, because he was specifically chosen by God with specific traits, specific qualities, and specific abil abilities um, that the Lord would use in him. So something that came across mine in, in this story, really, of Moses being found, God allowed Pharaoh to order a decree. God allowed all of this. God ordained all of, of, of Pharaoh um, officially going after Moses and wanting to kill him and the Israelites. But um, really, the, the story plot goes, as we all read, and you've probably heard this story a thousand times. Uh, Moses, obviously, was chosen by God. Pharaoh um, officially ordered a decree to kill all Hebrew boys. He then chose a Levite woman. God chose a Levite woman to have a boy um, who was supposed to be thrown into the Nile. 
Um, and then he also allowed Pharaoh's daughter named Bethia, I think that's how you say that, to find Moses. And there are so many different ways that the Lord could have brought Moses to this earth. The Lord could have chosen anybody else. He could have chosen somebody that we would have never met before, but he chose Moses. And he chose Moses for this specific way to come and officially lead the Israelites out of Egypt. So something that went through my mind is that Moses could have been uh, a disobedient. Moses could have also ran from the Lord's plan, but he knew that God was specific in his timing. God was specific in his ways. And God knew obviously what he was doing using Moses uh, to eventually lead the Israelites out of, out of Egypt and also was going to receive the Ten Commandments. Obviously, we still value that a lot today, but definitely in the old law, that was the law. So um, very neat how the Lord used him. But the same can be true for us, and the same can be true story for us. We don't know why Sam Cooper was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama in 1998. We don't know why Samuel Shockey was born in, in 1998. We don't know why um, Donald Trump is the president. We know nothing, but we do know that the Lord holds it. And God places everyone in specific moments for a specific time. So we can be faithful in that. We can be confident in that. Um, and we can trust that God um, uniquely and intricately places us where he needs us, just as he did Moses, but he also did Bethia in receiving Moses as her child. So the next thing that I thought of is God's plan never fails. Another promise, I think, in the story of Moses um, that we can see, and we can see a lot of different things with the story of Moses alone, but God cannot fail in his future plans. When we are worried, when we are stressed out, when we have no idea what to do, our God will always finish what he's going to begin in us. And that's hard. I know for me that's hard to think. And I think human nature always tells us that we really can't hold on to the things that we always begin. But we can be faithful. And we can be confident in the Lord that does start and he's going to finish everything he does. So I, I thought about some things. I, I can set a workout plan for three days a week. Uh, I can say for three days a week I'm going to work out and I'm going to do that. I want to build a table. Uh, I need to have this certain type of wood. I need to have this certain type of uh, material. I need to know what to do, and I need to have a plan. Uh, another example I thought of, I can say I'm going to go hang out with these friends every two or three days a week. I need to be specific and set these goals. Um, but I can think of so many examples in my life where I've made a plan for something, and I've fallen through with that completely. I'm sure that's the story of all of us, but we can be appreciative. We can be thankful. We can also hope in the fact that tonight our God not only cares for us, but also he's fallen through with all the goals he set for our life. And while we can't see a lot of those goals, while we can't see our life before us, it is hard to know that we can trust that the Lord can't fail and he won't fail. Um, uh, it's a lot of times I think I was thinking earlier today, it would be nice, and I know I've, I've mentioned this a thousand times before, as crazy as it sounds, I love for those airplanes at the beach, uh, you know, that ride over with a banner to a restaurant or somewhere to hang out. And uh, they give you the number. They give you everything you need to know about that place. And how many times would it be awesome just to have that from, from the Lord? And that is a goofy example to give you tonight. Um, but I think that is certainly true. We wish that was the case. We wish we could see the Lord. And we wish we could know what next year hold. But we also don't know that. And uh, even though we can't see the Lord's plan, He has a perfect one for us. And we've got to trust that. So the Lord cannot fail. From Exodus chapters 3, um, 11, we're all, all going to see a lot of things kind of going on. Moses and Aaron would officially go talk to Pharaoh. They would uh, tell the Pharaoh that, he, that the Lord had commanded the Israelites. He wanted them out of Egypt. Pharaoh was a little bit um, reluctant to do that, officially let them go. We all know this story with them crossing the Red Sea. We won't really go into that. But I wonder if, who all wonders if, uh, what tomorrow, what you'll do tomorrow, or um, what will uh, next year's, uh, class, a class that I'm taking next fall. What's that going to look like? What if, um, the big what if is, is always present. And I thought to myself, what if, what if Moses had not been born? What if Moses was never found in the Nile River? What if Moses had not been placed in the Nile River or been picked up by the wrong person? Through the life of Moses, we can see all kinds of what ifs. But I think the biggest thing we can see through Moses is that he trusted God's plan. He knew God was specific. He also trusted God eventually that he had been placed in the Nile River as a youth, but he also knew that the Lord didn't place him there for, for no reason. So he used that, eventually would use a lot of different experiences um, to, to, to lead the Israelites. And that's very comforting to me. Um, another passage of scripture we'll read. Um, this is one of my favorite passages of scripture. Flip over to Psalms 139, if you have your Bible. And uh, to really just show you how much God does care for us. And this is a passage of scripture we are definitely all familiar with. 
But I think, um, I, I know for me, I always read this when I need comfort, when I need peace. Um, this is my go-to chapter. And uh, it does show you how uh, detailed our Lord is. And it says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a, Lord, a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hear me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. We see a lot of different things going on in our world. And I think about this time period for us, as we don't know what's next, and as we are wanting to really discern the Lord's will in our life, we, we are, um, I know in my life, thinking day by day, I wake up thinking about what next year holds. I wake up thinking, what could I do to prepare myself for tomorrow? Um, we have a God that knows us, and we have a God that knows us better than we know our own self. And when we think we are on the wrong track, the Lord already knew where we were going to step before we even stepped there. And we can find hope in that again, and we can also trust that. Um, and, and kind of going back to the story of Moses, I think of myself in, in, in allusion to that. Um, in Exodus, when they crossed the Red Sea, how many times did the Israelites complain about they didn't have food, they didn't have water, they were out of discontent about where the Lord wanted them in their lives. And they had just... I mean, come through the Red Sea. If I think we could be there in 2020 now, if we could see um, an ocean part, and we could see that, I, my mind says that we would think of God never the same, that we would trust Him 100%. We would completely rely on Him. Um, and that's what you would think the Israelites would have done, seeing the Lord work in their lives, take them out of Egypt, bring them back to the promised land, or, or at least have them in the process of, of going there. Um, they, they wouldn't have complained. But we see so many examples of them complaining, it drew me to what kind of the mindset I have so many times in the Lord's plan for me. But example of that, in Exodus 16, 3, uh, the Israelites say, If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they go on. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve all, uh, all us to death. Um, and they are angry at Moses because he's led them to a place where they're not comfortable. And a lot of times we are not comfortable with God's plan because we're not comfortable where he's placed us. We are being stretched. We're being broken and that's a hard place to be, and I think we don't like that discomfort, so we don't like to go there. And when we don't go there, we don't obey the Lord. Um, so many times we do complain just like the Israelites did, and yet time and time again, the Lord reveals Himself to us. The Lord pro provides for us. The Lord take, takes care of us. Um, despite our failures, doubts, and uncertainties, we can be faithful in the fact that the Lord will always continue with His overall purpose and guidance in our plans. Just because I mess up today, or just because I'm going to mess up this time next week, the Lord's plan for Sam Cooper's life has not changed and it's never going to change, but I have to be faithful and obedient to follow in Him and trust in Him and wherever He leads. And it might not be a place where we're comfortable being, but we also have to trust that he, He's got us, but He's also paving the way for us every time. So last but not least, and the most, I think, most important fact of all of this tonight, um, it is always God's will for us to share the gospel. When we are uh, at a loss of, of knowing what's next and we are tired of people asking us, hey, what are you going to do about this? Or what are you going to do after you graduate? Or what are you going to do when you leave this job? When we want to know the Lord's will, like I mentioned at the very beginning, we can be confident that the Lord has told us that we are called and commanded to go share the gospel. Obviously, we receive that through uh, Matthew 28 and the Great Commission. That is our, that is our calling. That is the, the, the basis of every bit of who we are. We can search for hope. We can search for joy. We can reason. We can want to know the Lord's will. Um, but we do know that as followers of Christ, um, we have to be committed to sharing the gospel. And um, in conclusion, really, that looks different for a lot of different people in a lot of different places. The Lord's equipped me differently than He's equipped somebody in this college ministry. The Lord's equipped you differently than He's equipped me tonight. And uh, we can be thankful about that. I'm thankful that we're all different. Um, and regardless of our job, regardless of what degree we have, regardless of where we're at now, um, regardless of the church we're in in five years, or regardless of how many children we have, um, we are going to be surrounded by specific people um, for a specific time um, to be used by the Lord. And the way that I can share the gospel with somebody over here may be different than the way that you can share the gospel with someone over there. And that looks different for all of us because we do have different missions, we do have different interests, and the desires of our heart may be a lot different, obviously, than the person next to you or wherever you're at tonight. But we are all different but we have the same mission, obviously, and that's to know Christ, that's to worship Him, and that's also to share Him. Um, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's hard, even when we are tired of it, even when we've lost friends because of it. 
And last, if it is good to be in the church, I think something I thought about when I was, I was writing this, um, it is so good. And like yesterday, I mentioned it was awesome to be here with everybody and see people in worship. But we miss so much when we, get out, when we don't get outside of these walls and when we don't go talk to people and build relationships and hang out with people who are not within the church. We miss so much, and we also miss the Lord at work because we've not built relationships. The relationship's not there. We can't really share the gospel effectively a lot of times um, with those people. So we got to get outside of our box. We have to be um, okay with being uncomfortable. We also have to trust that the Lord's plan for us is perfect. He's not, forgiving us. He's not forgetting us, and He's not going to forget us. Um, and, we can, and we can be hopeful in that. So I'll, I'll finish with two verses, and then I'll close tonight. If you have your Bible, turn over to Ephesians chapter 2, um, and we'll, we'll read one more, and then we'll finish up. Ephesians 2, 10 reads, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And the last verse I want to read, if you'll flip over to 1 Corinthians, and um, we'll read that tonight also. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll start in verse 12. It says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all, kind, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So whatever we are in called to in our life, whatever job we're called to, I know we're all probably stressed about what that looks like or, or what place we're called to live in. The Lord has given us certain gifts, certain places that He wants us and it's going to be the best version of that gift because he's giving it to you. And he's not giving it to somebody else. He's giving it to you. He's giving it to me um, to be able to impact the people and the certain people in those places. So that's all I have tonight. But thank you all so much for, for listening. I do hope um, that you find hope and you also are challenged in this tonight. So let's pray and, uh, and we'll finish up. God, I thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for your challenge through your word, Lord. Thank you, God, that you know us. Uh, Lord, thank you that when we don't know what's next, God, that when we are clueless about the situation, God, you've placed us in, Lord, um, Lord, we can trust the fact that you are near. And God, your Holy Spirit is surrounding us. Your Holy Spirit is also breathing inside of us and moving inside of us and through us. God, help us to let you go. God, help us to let you do whatever you want to do. God, we trust you and we obey you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. Amen. <clears throat> Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know.
Say